One of the best things about Docker is that every application can have its own little world, its own container, its own separate environment, and not interfere with the host system or with the other containers. The problem is sometimes you want to have containers talk to each other. The perfect example is if you have a MySQL container, you want the other containers to be able to use that centralized database instead of having to roll a MySQL database into every application that you Dockerize. So I'm gonna show you the current best practice method for having a standalone MySQL container that other containers can talk to without exposing any ports to the rest of your network. It's pretty simple. The process has changed over the years. So this is the current best practice using a dedicated network. Let's check it out. Now, first I wanna point out what is actually going on. So here we have a bunch of different Docker containers that are running on our Docker server. We have uh, yours, which I, which I covered in a different YouTube video about how to install it, but this is a Dockerized version of yours. MySQL, and then PHP bulletin board, it just as an example program. These two are programs that would need to have access to a MySQL database. So you want to be able to have access to that, but unfortunately, unless you're going to expose a port and then map these through the exposed port to connect to MySQL, it's not entirely clear how you can have the individual containers connect to MySQL because even though they have an IP address, this isn't always the same IP address. When you create a container, it's going to get the next available IP address. So you can't just map to an IP address and expect it to always work. Thankfully, there's a really cool feature in the newer versions of Docker where you can create a separate network behind the scenes. So this is not exposed to the host systems network. And basically what happens, they connect behind the scenes to this bridge network. I'm just gonna call mine MySQL so I know what it's there for. And in order to communicate to the other containers, you just reference it by the container's name. So if the URLs container needs to access the MySQL container, it uses the host name, MySQL. It's automatically mapped through and it's able to connect to it as if it were on the same exact network because indeed it's on this MySQL network. So you don't have to worry about port forwards. In fact, MySQL doesn't have to have anything exposed using dash P and exposing it into the rest of the network. This can all be behind the scenes inside the Docker environment where the containers are talking to each other. All right, so let's go through and do this really quickly. Uh, first of all, let's do Docker network create MySQL. So we're going to create that network that we're going to be able to communicate in the back end with. Uh, we can say Docker network list. We'll see, this is what we have, the MySQL network. It's a bridge network, uh, and it's going to work behind the scenes so our containers can talk to each other. So let's actually create those two containers. First of all, we'll do Docker run. I'm gonna do dash D so it goes in the background. Name, oop, dash dash name, MySQL, dash dash network, MySQL. Again, it's gonna use that network we just created. And then I'm going to give it an environment variable, MySQL root password equals, let's do pickle for our password and use the MySQL image from Docker Hub. Hit enter. All right, that's running. Now let's do another one. Let's do a, our URLs database. So Docker run dash D name URLs. Again, network MySQL. I want it to be able to connect to it. And now I have to give URLs uh, some other options, like I need to map port 8888 with the internal port 80 on the container so we can actually reach it from the outside once it's installed and running. Environment variable of URL's site is going to be HTTP colon slash slash Docker port 8888. That's our current Docker machine. Dash E URL's DB host equals MySQL because that's, again, we reference other hosts on, or other containers in the same network by their container name. And if you look up here, we named it MySQL. So the host is going to be MySQL. And then URL's DB pass is going to be pickle because we just set the root password to pickle. Now, of course, we can use other uh, security. We could use a standalone database user. I'm just using the root user and stuff because we're making this ad hoc. And URLs is again from Docker Hub. So if I hit enter, it should pull all that down. Now, if we do Docker PS, we should see, all right, here is our URLs image listening on our local host. 
uh, or our, our local device on all of our, our host interfaces on port 8888 internally to port 80 on the URL's container. MySQL is running. Uh, it's running and we're able, you should be able to talk to each other on the outside. This is actually just a container that I have running on my Docker server, not connected at all to our project. But anyway, those two are running. They should be talking to each other and we can test that. If we open up a web browser and just try to go to http colon slash slash docker port 8888 admin, we should see the URLs installation page. And sure enough, there it is. Uh, we can install URLs and go through it. And of course, this is all using that MySQL database in a container that we're accessing, not by uh, mapping external ports, but rather by using that internal network. Now, if you Google this online, you're probably going to find ways that you can link Docker containers. Over the last few years, Docker has matured, but this is the current best practice way to actually get containers to talk to each other uh, without having to map weird ports or whatever. You create their own bridge network. They can talk to each other behind the scenes, and they don't have to expose that to the rest of the network. I hope that you play with Docker. I hope that you can uh, figure out what's going on here. What I actually do is when I use MySQL in Docker, I will make a volume and I will map the internal database structure to my host machine so that I can back up the actual databases using my traditional backup program. Or you can just back up the entire container if you haven't mapped a volume uh, to keep the databases outside. There's lots of stuff you can do with Docker, but this is a way that you can use a single MySQL instance with multiple applications and have it all work inside Docker. So if you want to get more comfortable with Docker, one of the perfect ways to go about doing that is to take a MySQL container and share it with other Docker containers so you're used to intercommunicating uh, with multiple containers that you can use in production on your own systems. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.